and Downing. Who mourns that now? Richard McCarthy does, does a bit of a whinge in there from time to time. Uh, Kyle Hayes, <laughs> no problem. Uh, Tom Condon. Jeez, they're all good better and famous stuff now. Uh, no, I don't know, they're all good fun. Graham and myself, probably. Dave really tries to, but it's kind of, you know, his, his genre of music is questionable from time to time, anyway. Keen Lynch. And if I shall become a stranger, no, it would make me more than sad. Caledonia has been everything I've ever Oh no, that song will haunt me, I'd say. Jeez, that's a good question. I'm trying to think who's... Seamus Hickey was in college for about 15 years. But he's a genius, so I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't that nice of Declan to give you a mention, Seamus? So if you were to describe uh, well, Declan now, you've got your chance. Yeah. But what best describes him as a teammate? He works across the road from me, uh, so he knows this is coming. But <laughs> Declan is Declan is, a, is as good a captain as you could have for a team. So he's a very even character. I noticed the way he didn't go into depth on many of his answers there, but that's what you get with Declan. So he's just he's as cool, as calm, collected, yeah. Declan thing. Particularly, you know, he takes everything in his stride. It uh, doesn't knock him out. Uh, probably the perfect guy to to walk up the steps of the Hogan last year for, for Limerick after a 45 year wait. Um, but yeah. A dry wit, to say the least. That was really nice. You totally left him off the hook there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there was no hurling action in the league last weekend, but let's just remind you of how the tables are looking heading into round three. The All Ireland champions are the only side in Division 1A with a maximum four points. Four sides are tied in two points, while Cork are bottom after suffering defeats in both of their opening games. While in Division 1B, Waterford and Dublin have 100% records, while Galway are in third place after their draw with Carlo 10 days ago. Leash and Offaly have suffered two heavy defeats each. Now a full slate of fixtures this weekend. Cork and Clare square off in Corky Rain on Saturday night. On Sunday, Tipperary travel to Wexford and Kilkenny host unbeaten Limerick in Nolan Park. And Division 1B, Leash and Offaly meet on Saturday night when both sides are looking for their first win. Waterford host Carlo in Farfield and on Sunday, all Ireland finalists Galway host Dublin at 2pm. And we'll have live coverage of Cork against Clare on Saturday night and Seamus will join Damien, myself and the rest of the team in Porky Rin. Coverage gets underway at 6.30 on Air Sport 1. Well, you know what, it's, it's always great to have a whole host of, of hurling matches, particularly when we had some classics, mm. the football the weekend. Now it's, it's time to get to the hurling yeah, chat. Yeah, it's, been too, it's been too long. <laughs> it's, you're going to come into your it's been, own. It's been too long. So let's kick off, okay, with, with Cork and Clare. Mm. There has been a lot of talk around Cork and we saw, you know, they're desperately chasing points. Are they in trouble? Do they really need a win against Clare? I don't, listen, I don't buy into that at all. I, I think I think where, where Cork are at the moment is, you know, there's no panic, in, in especially around this hurling team. They've proven themselves last year to be one of the best teams in the country. Their personnel are not any way different. In fact, they've actually added personnel. Uh, so I really wouldn't worry. You know, John Myler, I think, you know, he's a safe pair of hands. I think, when was the last time we've seen Cork light up the league? I haven't seen it. Like even going back to the to the year, we'll say when they they, they were relegated, mm -hmm. and it wasn't a glorious uh, return either. It was a, it was a tough road to actually get promoted again from Division One B. Mm -hmm. So if I'm Cork, I'm not worried at all. Um, you know, again, you know this this weekend against Clare, um, I think it's great. That the game the game is going to Parky Rin. I think it suits Cork down to the ground. The atmosphere is going to be much much better. Uh, in a close quarters kind of game, it's going to be similar enough actually to Cusick Park, yeah. where where Innes are playing or where Clare are playing. So it's you know this weekend is probably set up for them to actually have a good game because of the venue and because you know the, the, the first two games they did underperform a bit. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I'm not concerned if I'm from Cork. I, I really am not because they have all the tools. It's just a question of you know I say getting ready for summer and getting ready, especially with the league set up the way it has. I probably this year there's less to worry about. Yeah. Now, I mean, speaking of Cork, you were having a closer look at Cork's presence up front in, in their earlier games. So, Cork's forward line, aside from Offaly, they're the lowest, score, the lowest scoring team um, in Division 1A or 1B. Mm -hmm. um, they're averaging 30 attempts a game. 
So they'd want to be hitting very few wides to be to be winning the game against any 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 strong team. A couple of reasons: distribution um, has been very poor, and they're really lacking a physical presence inside. They've gone with Aiden Walsh, the big man, um, in at full forward, and he's shown a lot in terms. Of he scored five points from play in two games, but he's yet to win a long ball that's been put into him. Um, 50%, less than 50% of the contestable balls that have gone into him has been a negative outcome for mm-hmm. Cork. Um, and he is a player, even in football, who plays in the peripheries of the game. So they've been really struggling in, inside. And the third thing they really struggled against Wexford was in terms of Wexford's sweeper. Mm-hmm. And they really struggled on how they, uh, how they dealt with that. So we're looking at a few clips here in terms of you've been looking here at the distribution yeah. is probably the main thing that's the problem here it's just like even the first clip there you know the, the ball been delivered from your own full back line is a nightmare ball to the full forward line it's not the optimum place to deliver it here we've got poor footing I suppose is not helping out here with Aidan Walsh this, see this long ball in here when you've got a sweeper you really don't want to be playing narrow and down the middle. You want to be moving it to the side. Again, down the centre here, you want to be moving the, the sweeper around. You want to be making him, forcing him to make a decision to, to get down the, the channels. Like, even we have here, that ball was meant for a half forward. That wasn't meant for the full forward line. And you're, you're playing directly into the sweeper's hands there. So, you know, distribution is key when you're talking about an extra defender in the box. You, you can't afford to have lazy or poorly placed deliveries. And I think that's what you saw mainly from Cork. I think that'll improve as time goes on. I think they actually worked the ball around the middle an awful lot more. Last year, they were super effective shooting yeah. from deep. Um, but like, you know, when you look at Aidan Walsh, uh, and I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have picked him for full forward. I don't know if that's his natural position. Mm-hmm. What is a natural position anymore? But, you know, I don't think he's been done any service at all with the quality of the ball has been fed into him. A lot of that ball is, is A, it's, it's congested. You've got a number. It's not a one-on-one. I'd fancy him in a one-on-one. Um, but it's also, it's also coming from a kind of a deep place where you don't have, I suppose, the opportunity to, to put a low trajectory. It's basically high and as far as I can put it. And, you know, in those sort of circumstances, I don't think you're doing your forwards any favours. And in terms of a sweeper, um, if you were playing in a, in a forward line, what's the, having played in the full back line, mm. what's the best way to nullify, nullify a sweeper? There's two, men, two mm. players being left inside there and ball is just constantly being caught out. What, what is the most effective way? So this is something that's kind of been developed over time um, since, I suppose, it, David Fitzgerald would have really kind of hammered the sweeper back in 2013 and, and onwards. Uh, Derek McGrath did with Tiger Borka. Uh, but if you want to get, and Tiger Borka is probably one of the best operators of that, that sweeper role in the game that I've seen. What you want to do for those guys is play narrow with your full forward line. Get your full forwards, and if it's a two-man full forward line, you play it narrow, and you what you do is you break out. But it's a very, very important when you break out that A, you break out uh, very, you know, out to the wide channels, but then with depth. So even if two players go to the one side, you can actually have a very, very effective way of countering the sweeper if one of them hits towards the 45 and the other one then actually stays, mm. stays deep with a run along the 14 or the 21. The sweeper then has to make a decision which is, which is more dangerous there, and it gives the fellow delivering the ball um, an option inside. So you, you cannot play narrow, I don't believe, in, uh, with, when you're playing a sweeper. And playing Wexford, Cork knew, Cork knew that was coming. So uh, you, you'd, you'd like to think you need to be a bit more prepared for that. Well, let's move on now to the next game. Of course, we're talking Kilkenny and Limerick. This mm. is certainly what I'm sure that you'll have plenty to say on. I mean, mm. it's the league champions versus all Ireland champions. There's a lot of talk about this game as well. I mean, what is it? I mean, if you think about Limerick, they have a 100% record. Do you think they're going to stick with the same formula? Um, I, I think there's going to be a slight change in formula. I think because um, they've actually done very well in the first two mm. games, I think John Kiley's actually going to change it up. I'd imagine he's going to name a team and give guys chances. Really? Um, especially, I suppose, you know, Limerick Kilkenny is a game, especially in Limerick, is something that, you know, it carries a bit of weight. Kilkenny and Limerick have always brought out the best in each other, I would say. Um, they've had, you know, they've definitely had the, the winning of it in the last, in the last, I suppose, decade or so. Mm. But it's something, you know, both teams play a fairly open brand of hurling, quite physical. Uh, it plays actually a lot into, into what Limerick fans want to see from, from, from these hurling games. Um, so what I'd actually expect now, going to Nolan Park, John Kiley, with the, the context of the games that he's played, I expect him to give a few more chances again to change up the forwards, but I expect him to change up the, the, the backs. He's played essentially the same six backs for the mm-hmm. first two games. Um, who would actually have been a prime candidate for going in here to, to be tested out was Paddy O'Loughlin, but now UCC are after getting to the Fitzgibbon mm-hmm. final. So it actually it, it kind of curtails that a small bit. But um, I expect the, I suppose the opportunities to come now. 
uh, when you get a good start in a league like this, uh, you're looking to kind of maybe try a few more things and get a few more guys involved. I'd expect Limerick to do that. Yeah, and let's look at Kilkenny now for a second because I mean, Kilkenny love a challenge. Do you think they're going to be loving the fact they're taking on the All Ireland champions now? And a lot of people are talking about the fact that Limerick are on, on top of the table. Yeah, and at home and coming off the back of the feed as well. Um, for me, one of the really interesting aspects of the Clare game was the domination of the Clare. Um, the Clare half back line on the Kilkenny half on the Kilkenny half forward line, especially in the air, which is something which has mm. been the you know the template for for Kilkenny hurling as winning your own your own contest, and they were so badly beaten. So it'll be very interesting. Uh, Brian Cody, I'd say, has spent the last two weeks hammering home. You've got to win your own ball or contest it, um, and against a really really strong. This is probably the toughest. The, the toughest challenge for any forward line coming up against this Limerick defence. Yeah, it's interesting because it's a real strength for Limerick. Is, mm. So their backs are very, very tight. So they're the lowest conceding defence in the in Monet, which is quite strange. And Kilkenny, despite having such a kind of a real, uh, I suppose, inexperienced crop and missing the Belly Hale contingent, are the highest scoring team in mm. Division 1A. Um, I'm, I'm very interested to see, especially coming off that performance with a half forward line uh, uh, against Clare last week by Kilkenny. Limerick's, Limerick's half-back line is their platform. So they build yeah. pretty much everything they do off of delivery from the optimum position, which is their half-back line midfield. They really like to see Declan Hannon hitting and delivering ball because he's excellent at it. So depending on the personnel that John has, John Kiley has there at the weekend, um, it's going to be a big test for, for Kilkenny. They're, they're going to want to do well there or else they're going to be on the back foot for the whole game. Um, it's going to be an interesting matchup. A strength of Limerick versus, you know, I would say, uh, you know, that's still an open question for Kilkenny. Yeah. They've got new contributors, which is really good to see. You've got uh, you've got Richie Leahy, Leahy <laughs> in that part of the country. <laughs> uh, you've got Billy Ryan. You've got, yeah. you know, you've got Blanchfield. So you've got you've got really good, you know, prospects and interesting players inside there for Kilkenny. But you know, this is a strength of Limerick, and they're going to have to match up well against it to have a to have a fighting chance. Absolutely. So let's move on now to to Wexford's Tipperary. I mean, Liam Sheedy, you know, one win, one loss. I think he's happy enough at the moment how they're performing. Yeah, um, well, the, the, the win in, in the, at the home win was very important for him in front of the crowd. Um, yeah, he's, we, haven't really, we haven't really seen too much different in terms of what Tipperary mm. are doing. The players who have come through, Jake Morris has, has, has looked very... He's, he's added a lot of continuity to that forward line, mm. but he kind of was coming through last year. Um, we haven't really seen too much extra from Tip that we hadn't seen before. Um, he hasn't really had a settled team. He's made a few changes mm. between the two games. Yeah, again, the win and the, and the loss are less important than the performances, and some of his key people are performing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what, that's what Sheedy's looking at. He, like, especially the first day against Clare, you had, a, you had a, f a very good team performance. Backs shut Clare out. Forwards were very sharp, and their finishing was clinical. Jake Morris setting up Seamus Cannon for those goals. Against Limerick last week, super competitive, very physical, high energy for maybe 40 minutes of the game. Petered out a bit towards the end, that's fine, but you still had the performance there. You still had, a, I suppose, a level of competition that Sheedy will want to see, and that's what, he, that's what he really was kind of alluding to at the start of the year when he was talking about their physicality and their conditioning. Yeah. It was really the, is the competitiveness of it, their willingness to make tackles, mm -hmm. and I suppose their aggression on the ball. And we saw that from Tipperary in the first game. I think it was kind of like, it was very obvious, it was nearly stamped on their forehead, we must be <laughs> aggressive uh, if, against Clare in the first yeah. half. So, you know, I think he's more concerned with the performance. I think he likes what he's seen. Um, and again, I, I said it the last day at the, the, the Tip Limerick game, Sheedy has a big picture mentality. Yeah. Uh, Tipperary have gotten to league finals the last two years running and, you know, it's, it has been the inflection point for their year going down. So. Yeah. Uh, bigger plans. Much bigger. Okay, well, let's talk about their opposition. I mean, Wexford, there's a lot of talk about Clares, Tipperary, Kilkenny, and Limerick. But Wexford are kind of going in under the radar a small bit, and they'll certainly have gained confidence from the Cork win, I mean. Especially, um, one of the great things for, on, 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 uh, from their side of things was Lee Chin coming on, Rory O'Connor came on. Lee, Lee Chin came on, and he was absolutely flying it from the, from the minute he came on, winning ball. He, looked so, he, he always looks very physically strong, but he just looked on point. Um, so they should be actually pushing on from that, um, and it should have really good momentum. Yeah, no, I, what I like from Wexford is they're... So they've got a variety of scorers now. They were very... Very, I suppose, uh, reliant on Lee uh, and Conor McDonald mm -hmm. uh, in the, I suppose, the last couple of years. What we're seeing, Carl Dunbar stepped up very, bit, very well in the, uh, this year. They've got a, a better variety of scorers. Uh, Conor McDonald hasn't been asked to do w too much, um, and I think the performance done in Cork was, was, I suppose, a good team performance. I would have said where I actually thought they enforced their will from start to finish. Dee O'Keefe, I thought was excellent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got, and you know, again, Matthew O'Hanlon, yeah. centre back, very strong. I think these are. This is what Davy wants to see, and I think it's a good sign for Wexford uh, that yes, they have they have marquee and star talent, 
but it's good to have the spread around. Absolutely, and of course, the last game we're going to talk about, but certainly not the least, we're going to have Galway Dublin. You mentioned to me that you see this as, as a barometer for Dublin. Yeah, it's a measuring stick. It absolutely is. So um, coming into the league this year, I think Matty Kenny was obviously, you know, he's been he's an excellent coach. Mm -hmm. He's been working away, and, and they've been training hard. But this is this is uh, I suppose a, a test of where they're at. I thought they finished the year very very well under uh, under Gilroy last year. Uh, with Dublin did and I think this is pretty much Matty Kenny's first first real test to see right where where are we uh, in a competitive league fixture uh, against a team I don't think Carlo did them any favours actually last week they didn't want Carlo to take anything off Galway now Galway will, you know the default is they need a reaction from last week mm -hmm. regardless of the personnel they had out so uh, Dublin's task is going to be harder Salt Hill most likely a hundred mile an hour wind against them, <laughs> both halves. So like it's uh, it, it's it's a test for them, but it's also afterwards I think we'll see where this Dublin team are because at the moment I think they're trending well, beating bad teams by a large margin, good sign of any team. But you absolutely need to measure yourself against the best to see where you are. Well, Seamus mentioned Maddie Kenny, I suppose, being a Galway native, this is, you know, it's a test for him as well. He's going to be there in Galway, his home place, and then he's going to be managing, yeah. managing Dublin. He's going to know a lot about the Galway team and the Galway players as well, um, which isn't to be underestimated um, in how he's going to set up in this game. I think we've seen with Kerry Dublin, the last day was the first time we've really seen Kerry tested under the new management and this is going to be similar for Dublin mm -hmm. in terms of anything that they do have up their sleeve, this is the time that they're going to try it. Um, against Galway, the challenge is always um, physical and this Dublin team over the years have been quite physical. There's a lot of young players coming through mm -hmm. and it's just going to be a, a, a massive test physically for them. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think they are young, especially in the forwards. You know, they've got some really nice and I suppose exciting forwards, but especially with, I suppose, the the, the youth side of things being against them in yeah. terms of experience, it doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. Um, but physically, this Galway team, I think they're, ju they're just difficult to go against because of their phys physicality. Um, and they were, they've been missing a couple of players, obviously, with their club involvement, uh, and they still be, they'll, they'll still be without them. But uh, if Dublin can actually move the ball and avoid contact, I think it's actually playing to their strengths because I think they are fast and I think they are w well able to move the ball. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it goes at the weekend, but uh, I would like, I, 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 I would, I would expect Galway to actually to, to really respond to last week and yes. say, oh, by the way, that was. No. Well, that's that was what I was going time. to ask you guys because you know after that there's so much talk about it. I mean, they didn't lose the game; it was a draw. But mm. do you expect a Galway backlash now? Yeah, you would. The, the Galway team, they, there's a lot of said they, they had a lot of their regular starting, but especially in their defence, they lacked, um, especially on the spine of the team. It was just very unsettled. Mm -hmm. um, and when you when you have that with any team, it's very hard to, to judge anything, especially when a team does come with aggression and does bring the challenge. Your foundations aren't really there. Um, so I'd expect Galway to bring a bit, a bit, a few of the regulars down the spine of their team and that's going to make a massive, massive difference. It's just a reaction, it's a kick, it's a, it's a natural thing, it's, it's mm. what Tipperary had after coming after the Munster League yeah. game against Clare to, to play in Clare in the league. It's just a, kind of a small lift in t tackle rate, intensity, that kind of, those kind of words and I suppose that's what you're going to see here. But like, it's going to be very interesting, the flip side, Carlo are going to Waterford, I, that's, a, that's a tough challenge for mm. them to back up what they did against Galway against a team who were absolutely blazing through Vision 1B. So that, on the flip side, for Carlo, it's actually a very interesting place to be as well. A tough place to be, I would say. Plenty of talking points and I can't wait for all those games coming up the weekend. Time for another break now. We welcome back here in Donaghy and get some of your questions when we return. Stay tuned. Supporting all 32 counties, Alliance.